I'm Claudio from the band Liver, and uh, we're doing something special here today because, uh, uh, as you know, we're recording a new album. Uh, actually, we're recording four albums sim simultaneously, but one of them's almost finished, uh, Administering the Old Spunk Eye. And we've been releasing songs from this album um, for a little while now, and um, the curious thing is a lot of people have been asking us how we get our guitar sound and by a lot of people I mean of course Dave Johnston so today I'm gonna do what no other engineer or producer would ever do and I'm gonna show you exactly how we get our guitar sound okay is that good for you Dave anyway I'm gonna break it down into four different parts one the guitar two the signal processor three the amplifier and four the recording of it so first off uh, uh, the guitar this is the guitar we use for all the rhythm tracks on administering the old spunk eye now this is a, a, a custom built guitar and uh, <clears throat> the way it's set up is um, I buy seven string sets of string and I end up throwing away the high E for a six string setup. So what we have here essentially is the B string, E string, A string, D string, G string, and B string. No E string on the high. And this way it gives us a thicker sound on the top, on the bottom end of the guitar. So that's point number one. Buy seven string sets, throw away the high E. That's part of our sound. Um, secondly, we are detuned a half step all the way across. So we're not in standard tuning, we're in detuning. And then uh, thirdly on this guitar, the volume potentiometer on this guitar is not a 500k pot like normal guitars or a 250 like a Stratocaster it's a 1 mega ohm potentiometer so essentially what you're doing when you turn it all the way up is you're hardwiring the pickup directly to the output so you're hearing every characteristic of the pickup and nothing is is dampered no high end is dampered and it's a super high output guitar. Okay, so that's the guitar setup. Okay, see, uh, Claudia missed a really important part there with the guitar, um, probably because he's modest, but it is a custom built guitar that he built. And uh, it sounds friggin' incredible, not just because of the string configuration, configuration. Um, it's an amazing guitar to play, and uh, that's really all I got to say about that. So give Claudio props. Secondly, the signal processor. This is where we get our distortion from. It's the Zoom GS.1UT, and uh, it's about 300 bucks when I bought it. I bought this like probably about seven years ago, but. Uh, it's pretty cool. It's got a, a tube in it, so you can really, you know, hit that tube on the output and uh, get a nice sound out of it. But all you do is you find a distortion sound that you like, and you just go with it. That's it. Okay, third, we're going to come over here, is the amplifier. Here's the amp that we're using. It's a bass amp. It's the BX100 by Crate. Things are only like a hundred bucks online. But it's got a, a, a really nice, I don't know if you can see it, but a really nice 12 inch speaker in it. Anyway, this is our amp. It's a bass amp. And uh, I really like using bass amps for guitars because you can get a lot of uh, a lot of low end and when you're recording digitally you need a lot of low end 
uh, especially if you don't have the best uh, A to D converters. So uh, this gives me all the low end I need for the sound. And uh, as you can see, the EQ setting, there's not much going on there. One thing we do do, do do, is uh, our input gain is very low on this. And the reason for that is we're doing what's called front ending. Front ending is if we go back to the, the uh, signal processor, the output of the signal processor is slammed. And thus we are slamming the input of this amplifier. So we don't need a whole lot of input volume. And we're really making the amp work. The, even the output here is kind of low. That's just my practice mode, but you know, I'll put it up to like one o'clock for a recording. It's extremely loud at one o'clock. Um, that's it. Step four, recording. I have here very expensive microphone. This is the Shure SM58. Very expensive. It's like 98 bucks. <laughs> and all I do is I aim it directly at the center of the speaker about four to six inches away from the, the grill. That's it. Done. I'm going to pull up a session here. Uh, what should we do? Oh, Birdman is part of. That's Here Comes the Devil. That's part of uh, Spunk Guy, so we'll do that one. I say I like how you keep a very neat workstation. Yeah, I know, right? Yeah, it's, very it's very organized and. I'm going to be on hoarders. <laughs> Using a Behringer board here for uh, just monitoring. Uh, no signal is going through that to be recorded. It's just monitoring output, and we're listening on some Alesis MK2 monitors. One's got a boogie on it. Yeah. You never the boogies never go where you flick them. Yeah. <laughs> That's just the guitars, and that's exactly the way I just showed you that we set them up. Really simple. But uh, when you're recording this stuff, you have to find complementary um, uh, sonic partners for this thing. So things like the bass, once we add the bass in, it becomes a whole different level of... Uh, of um, what would you call it sonic shapes and it becomes something a little bit different <laughs> It's not just a guitar sound, it's the bass sound married with the guitar sound. And I wanted a really aggressive bass for this particular album. I wanted it to sound like, um, almost like a piano string. Like, you know, that aggressive low note type of punch to the bass. And then of course, once you put everything in context, it gets a, even more aggressive. So there you go, punchy kick, um, a snappy snare, aggressive piano-like bass, and that simple guitar setup that we just talked about. That's how we get the liver sound for administering the old spunk eye. Really fucking far from a kid. I got a bee in my hair. I got a bee in my bonnet. Get off of me, you cocksucker. <laughs>